Welcome to the Googleplex. This is an incredible place with lots of great stuff being worked on every single day. Before I worked here, I always wondered what it would be like to come to the Googleplex, meet up with a Googler, and have coffee with them, and just chat about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. And today we're going to do exactly that. Welcome to this episode of Coffee with the Googler. Today I'm speaking with McDuff from the Google Translate team. And we're going to be learning all about some of the cool things that are available in Google Translate. And it's one of my favorite technologies because I'm a big Star Trek fan. And it's one of the things that brings like the universal communicator from Star Trek much closer to reality. So we welcome. hope. <laughs> Beat Thanks. me up. Good to be here. <laughs> so welcome, McDuff. And tell us all about machine translation. What, what's it all about? Well, machine translation is using computers to solve problems of understanding and communication across languages. Okay. It's based on a technology called statistical machine translation because most of how it works is based on finding very large numbers of examples of translations, mostly on the World Wide Web, and using statistics to see how various words and groups of words and phrases tend to be translated from one language to another so that it can make reasonable guesses about how to translate a sentence it's never seen before. I see. So it's not a straight like lookup table of this word is this, this no, word is this. No. It has a lot of statistics about possible translations and some pretty advanced algorithms to pick the best one and how, how to combine them to make something natural sounding in the resulting language. Cool. So sometimes like a phrase might be translated one way in one document and translated another way in another document. Yes. For, for common uh, phrases, we'll have many candidate translations cool. for, a, for a language. And now, now what, what kind of like volume do you get in this? How big is Google Translate? Well, we translate about a billion characters a day, about 100 million words or so. Wow. Uh, for around 100 million up, upwards of that users per day. Wow. OK. Yeah. So now there's a lot of languages that must support to get that kind of volume. Well, the volume doesn't really come from a lot of languages. A small number of languages account for most of the volume. I see. Got <laughs> it. But we do support a lot of languages. We, okay. we, we, uh, we've we worked very hard to make sure we support even languages with relatively low usage. So okay. we, we've, we've made a big push over the last few years to get up to 90 languages supported. 90. Wow. Yes. So like, what are some of the like less common languages that uh, are supported? Do you have a favorite? <laughs> Do I have a favorite? Well, my personal favorite is Welsh, which ah. I learned a little bit a few years ago. Creso. I, I, Creso. I, <laughs> Creso e coffee with a Googler. And we're going to need translation for that underneath. Diolchen <laughs> Um yeah, I, I started taking some courses a couple couple years ago and learned it. Um, so we we do support that in Translate, have for several years. It doesn't get a tremendous amount of traffic, but one thing you learn working on translation is people are very proud of their languages. It's a very important cultural thing to see their language represented on the internet, to have tools available to use it, and especially for minority languages, languages that are threatened, people right. feel very strongly about them. Yeah, and, and, and Welsh is a great example of that. I lived That's in Wales one. for three years, and the yeah. pride that they take, and it's a beautiful language too, the, the pride they take in it. And so one of the things as well that you do, isn't it, is like an OCR translation, so you can hold up a camera and read text and Yes, yeah, this is something we, we launched earlier this year, was instant camera translation, so you can just open translate and open your camera and point it at text, and it translated instantly on the screen. Right, so like for, for Welsh, for road signs in Cardiff, that we, would be... We don't do Welsh yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we uh, launched earlier this year with support for English to and from six languages. Okay. French, Spanish, Italian, German, Russian, and Portuguese. Cool. Uh, but just the other day, we launched support for downloadable packs for an additional 20 languages. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. So I look forward to having a play with that. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, one of the things with machine translation is that it's not always accurate. It is not always accurate. Yes. And I'm sure there's some funny things that can go wrong and... There are a Lost lot of translation. Yeah, there are a lot of funny things. Um, Latin produces a lot of hilarious examples because it it it's used in funny ways on the web, not the way people normally talk. People put uh, Latin quotations around in strange places, <laughs> or there's this thing called lorem ipsum text that printers use to fill yes. out web pages. There was a conspiracy theory going around around the internet uh, earlier this year that there were coded messages in our translation hidden in lorem ipsum. Yes, yes, there there were. Uh, any web developers, <laughs> you probably have seen lorem ipsum, like an, when yeah. you put like a text block on your pages, that, that's the, the text that they auto populate so you can see the layout, right? Yes, so, okay. yes. Uh, some of the more straightforward, funny examples are when you get the sense of a word wrong. A lot of words and languages have many possible meanings, okay. but one, one favorite that we've seen is bed bugs. Okay. The word bugs in the number of languages it's gotten translated to the word for software bugs. So ah. bug software defects. So there's a software problem with my bed. Yes. OK. Yes. Wow. Or it can get a little edgy with, are you free today? If the word free gets translated to a word meaning no cost, <laughs> no price, no money. Um, 
You got to be careful who you say that. Yeah, to. absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> you free? So. No, no. Uh, but, what, what, I'm free today. Yes. <laughs> there's, there's one that I pers personally love, and it was like there's this girl on YouTube, and she will like oh, take songs, I know where you're going. yeah, right, and she will translate like the song into one language, and then into another, and then into another, and then into another, and come like on a roundabout way through about 20 languages back into English, yes. and then she will. She's a great singer, and she will sing the. Uh, the translation, have you seen it? Uh, those things are hilarious, yeah. I think they, they really show how much is always lost in translation. It, it, it gets lost even faster with machine translation, but it, it's very interesting because so many things are hard to express, especially song lyrics Songs and poetry. And, yeah. Even professional translators really struggle to get get those translated in an understandable but, way. Yeah, but what struck me as remarkable was that even though it was wrong, you got the gist of it. Of what yes. It yeah, and it went through all these languages, and I think there was one like Bohemian Rhapsody, and the, yeah. the opening line of Bohemian Rhapsody came out as like, you know, like a mother I shot a guy, or something like that, after going through 20 different translations, and it, yeah. was, it was really cool. Well, that's what's amazing about it, is even though we do make big mistakes in translation and a lot of times you might translate a web page or a news story, maybe not one sentence is translated absolutely perfectly, but over the course of a long enough document, you can get the sense of what it's about. Yeah. And the difference between seeing a wall of something you don't understand at all and knowing the general topic of, of a, an article can cool. be a big difference to people. Yeah, and, and, and that's one of the things that the statistical-based translation helps you get right. Yes. Cool. That, that's the best thing for it, is mm -hmm. getting the gist of an, of an article. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, one thing I'd also noticed that you've been working on recently is that bringing people who are expert speakers of the language into the fold, so giving people the ability to feed back into the statistical-based translation that says, you know what, in my language, we don't really say it like this, we say it like this. So. Yeah, so you're talking about translate community. Yes. So that's yes. something we introduced last year. Um, a great thing about that is you said experts. You don't really even have to be an expert. Anyone who is reasonably competent in two languages and wants to improve the translation can go to translate community okay. and, and help. Um, this was something that kind of surprised us because... We're, people are just volunteering to help make our product better, but I mentioned earlier how passionate people are about their languages, and especially minority languages or things that are underrepresented in the world. And for years, people were saying either, Google, why don't you support my language? Or why aren't you better at supporting my language? And f for years, we had to say, well, there's just not enough data out on the web for us to train our models on. But eventually, we just tried asking people, hey, will you come and help? Yeah. And there was a lot of enthusiasm, especially from these minority language communities. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's kind of exciting, though. It's like getting people involved. To, it really is exciting. To We're to trying make to better. make it more fun and engaging for people and, and let them use it as a way to connect with each other and right. to feel some satisfaction in what they're doing. And it becomes less about just pure machine translation and people are getting involved in translation yes. as well, which is really neat and keeping the language alive. Yeah, so in increasingly for very common queries and casual and conversational queries, it becomes more and more likely that when you ask for a translation, the translation you see from Google Translate will have been provided by members of the Translate community, which is... Very cool. satisfying. Yeah, very yeah. cool. So now one of the things, uh, you've just recently brought out a new app, right? Or there's an update? Yes, we did. We just updated the the mobile apps. Uh, like I mentioned, they add, it adds 20 new languages to the instant camera mode. Oh, cool. And we've also made the speech and conversation translation much faster than it was in the previous release. Nice. So the big feature from the previous release was you could set up a conversation and two people could speak and it would automatically detect which language people are speaking in and, and switch back and forth. So that's happening cool. much faster now. So you don't need as fast a network for it to cool. work responsively. Cool. Uh, we also improved the accessibility of the app for visually Im impaired users. So this, this launched just the other day on Android and iOS. Oh, nice. Very nice. exciting. I'll, I'll have to download and have a play. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I'm a developer and I want to start building translation into my apps or using translation in my apps, how, how do I get started? So we have a Google Translate API. Okay. It's on the, the cloud platform, um, cloud.google.com. And uh, yes, we, we, we pay, uh, we, we charge by, by the character for, okay. for translation, and uh, we support all, all 90 languages, and we have a okay. big developer community developing applications with that. So if I'm, if I'm a cloud developer using the, the cloud.google.com console, the developer's console, yes. I will see Translator there as, yes. a, as an option. Okay, cool. So well, thank you so much, McDuff. That was really awesome, and it's, uh, it's okay. great to catch up and learn about some of the things and find somebody else who speaks a few words of Welsh. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> great. So, and, and thank you, everybody, for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler. I hope you learned as much as I did today. It was a, To me, it was really interesting to learn about the great things that are happening in Translate and the great things that are happening when the community gets involved. 
And as Macduff said, go onto the Cloud Developers Console and you'll be able to get access to the APIs if you want to build translation into your own apps. Or you can download the new translation app and like play with some of the new languages that we spoke about. So again, thanks everybody and be sure to tune to the Google Developers channel for more great videos.